Okay, here on our server, we need to install the remote access role. So I'm going to jump into server manager, right? Because that's where we go to add roles. All right, so we see that right here is add roles and features. I'm going to give this just a minute. Uh, you can see at the top there's a, well, there was a little status bar that it was that it was updating, but we're all up to date. So I'll click add roles and features. It's a role based installation. Click next. We're going to do it on New York Mem2. Next. And right here is remote access. So I'm going to check that box. And when I do, as we've seen with many other roles that we've installed, there are a number of additional roles and features that it wants to do along with it. I'm just going to go ahead and say, yep, that's fine. Add whatever you need. Add those features. And then we will click Next. I do not need any additional features, so I can click Next again. Here it explains exactly what remote access is. I'll click Next again. You'll see this is where I get the choice of uh, the different role services and you'll see direct access and VPN this right here in parentheses RAS stands for remote access service okay because again going back to the old days remote access services is what it was called okay so these are our two uh, remote access solutions and routing is the other option that we have with this role where we can provide NAT like I was talking about before and we could also be a LAN router right we can go ahead and actually say that this particular server because it has two network cards could just simply act as a router I'm gonna go ahead and click next uh, the rest of this I'm just gonna take the defaults because these are the additional roles and services that were added automatically so we have the web server role and I'm gonna accept exactly what it says that I need click next and finally install so it's going to go through and it's going to install all the necessary roles and services that are needed. Uh, this can take a, a certain amount of time depending on the speed of your computer. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and you know speed up the video here, uh, you know through through the magic of, of video editing. And if you're following along, go ahead and pause the lesson and uh, pick things back up when this process has completed. Okay, so. As we can see here, the bar has gone completely across the screen. Uh, it says configuration required, but after that it says installation succeeded on NYMEM2. Okay, so there is additional configuration that is required, meaning just installing the role doesn't really get you anywhere. Right here you'll see that you can go straight into the getting started wizard right from here. So I'll go ahead and click that link now. And let me pull this down where we can see it. All right, so what do we have here? Welcome to Remote Access. What options do we want to select? Do we want to deploy both direct access and VPN? Do we want to deploy just direct access or do we want to do just VPN? Well, as I mentioned before, we want to go ahead and we're just doing VPN here. Okay, I'll save direct access for another lesson. So I'm going to do VPN only. And then it takes us straight into routing and remote access. And I will tell you, by the way, uh, this window in the background here, uh, we could go ahead and close this at this point. It's no longer necessary. Let me go ahead and expand routing and remote access so we can see everything. Now this probably doesn't look right, right, in the sense that we don't have a whole lot here, but more importantly, we see this red down arrow. Hmm. Well, let's click on the server and see what that's telling us. What it's telling us is that we need to configure the server. Right, and it tells you right here that you can go to the action menu and click configure and enable routing and remote access. Right, So I could come up here and I could do that. Or I could simply right click and do the same thing. It's really no difference. So let's do that. Let's configure and enable routing and remote access. Here we get another little wizard. Click next. What do I want this server to, to be? Okay, and you can see right here we want it to be a remote access server. You'll notice by the way we can also do NAT. We could do a VPN along with NAT. We could do a secure connection between two private networks. Okay, so if we were going to do like a site to site VPN, or we could even go in and do it manually. But for right now, we want to just go ahead and, well, we're just going to set up a, a standard VPN. So I'll go ahead and click next. Here's where we get to choose do we want VPN or do we want dial up? Okay, so if you find yourself in an environment where there truly is the need for a dial up modem, you can do it, but typically we're going to be selecting VPN. Click next again. 
Now I need to select the network interface that connects the server to the internet. So I need to know which one of these is the outward facing card. And remember, the .10 network is our actual corporate network. So we want to highlight the 11 network. Now I will also tell you that one other thing I'm going to do here is this little checkbox that says enable security on the selected interface by setting up static packet filters, which allow only VPN traffic to gain access to the server. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to tell you that, actually as a whole, I should tell you that when using a scenario like I have here, which is uh, I have a single server, so I'm kind of emulating all this, It's, it, I mean, I, and I, I promise you, when you're doing this on real servers in a real production environment and you're trying to actually make you know, a real connection and you're really connected to the internet and, and things like that, the stuff works. And not only does it work, but it works like so easy. I mean, it, it really does. But in this simulated environment, not so much. Uh, there's, there's a lot of little quirkiness to it. And one of the things that I found was, even though theoretically this should still work, because that's all we're going to really try to do is make VPN traffic. Can, you know, that's the only connectivity we're going to have. Uh, it, it does get kind of mad. So I'm going to uncheck that box for demonstration purposes. Um, we want to make sure Ethernet 2 is the one that's highlighted here as being the one that connects to the internet. Click next. Now we need to choose how are the clients. So when we have a remote access client connecting in, how are they getting their IP address? Right, Because they have to have an IP address on that .10 network to be able to communicate with other servers in the corporate network. If you have a DHCP server set up on your internal corporate network, you can automatically have those clients get an IP address from the DHCP server. If you do not, then you can actually create a range of addresses and have this remote access server basically act like a DHCP server for the remote access clients. And that's what we're gonna do here. So I'm gonna click next, create a new range. We'll say 192.168.10. I'm gonna do 50. And I could either type in the end or I could just come down here and I could say how many addresses do I want to sign. I'm going to do 11. Okay, I'm going to do 50 to 60. And you'll see why. I actually like to do that one extra. Whereas, you know, typically in other scenarios, if you've ever watched any of my stuff, you, you've seen me do always do more like blocks of 10 or, or, or some even number like that. Uh, I'm going to do the 11th for one specific reason that I'll show you once we make the connection. So I'll click OK. And you want to be careful, by the way, if you ever do a static range like this on your remote access server, you, you really need to make sure you coordinate so that if you have a DHCP server out there, that you're not conflicting with the addresses it's going to hand out. Uh, or if you're not using DHCP and everything is truly static on your network, well, you have to make sure it's a range that's not being used. Okay, All the same rules apply as far as duplicate IP addresses. So I'll click Next. Now, if we have multiple remote access servers, okay, so let's say we set up a whole series of these VPN servers because we have a lot of remote users and one server is not enough to handle all the connections. Then there's something that you can implement called radius, which allows us to go ahead and basically set up the rules for connectivity in one central place that will go ahead and control all the remote access servers so that they'll all be consistent. Uh, another thing you can do with Radius is you can also do an accounting, you know, keep track of who's connecting and where did they connect and for how long and all that stuff. Okay, we're not going to bother with that for right now. We only have the one remote access server, but I just wanted to kind of quickly explain what this Radius server would be. So I'm going to say no, go ahead and use routing and remote access to authenticate the request. I'll click next and finish. Now you get a message here, and I always find it interesting. And this is not new, by the way. Uh, even in the former versions of Windows Server, we had this exact same message would pop up. And it's an important message. I'm only laughing because we already said we're not using DHCP. What it says is to support the relaying of DHCP messages from the remote access clients, you must configure the properties of the DHCP relay agent with you know, specifically pointing to the IP address of your DHCP server. So the point is, is if you wanted to use a DHCP server and you wanted all the various DHCP options and everything else to pass through to, between the DHCP server and the client, you'd have to set up this system as a DHCP relay agent pointing to that DHCP server. 
Otherwise, the client would only get an IP address from the DHCP server and all other options like DNS server and stuff like that would all come from the remote access server. The reason I laughed is because we're not using DHCP and we already told it that. So I always wonder why this message comes up when I've already said I'm not using DHCP. So I'll click OK and not worry about that message. And it will take just a moment here while it goes through and it configures and enables the routing and remote access services.